Just recently, I've been working on my daughter's early medieval impression, or costume as you might call it. Today, we're going to make a gock stack bag. Today we're going to make a gock stack bag. That is a bag that was found in a grave in a place called Gokstad. It's a really interesting bag. A lot of historians don't quite know how to interpret it, but it is really fascinating. Let's take a quick look. So what you're seeing is fairly thin leather with how we've interpreted as a relatively thick leather top. It's on a leather cordage uh, and inside is wool. We'll, we'll go through all those pieces. Uh, as we do the construction, the build, it's really fantastic. It's a great little coin purse. And for those people that are at medieval events or Renaissance fairs, this is a really, really useful way to be able to carry a lot of your stuff. So, uh, so let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the handles and I've just found a nice scrap of three and a half millimeter leather which will do just fine for that. When you're cutting leather just make sure you're using a nice sharp blade. Alrighty guys, so we've got some nice scraps of three and a half millimeter leather. That's around about 10 ounce, I think, uh, for my American and Canadian viewers. And we're just gonna get a nice rounded little corners. I'm making this bag for one of my daughters. Um, she has kind of outgrown some of her stuff, I guess. So we're making a whole new costume if you want to call it a costume alrighty so next step is to bevel the edges I bevel the edges on all my projects and this just gives them a nice rounded smooth edge it's really Good to work with. And I think it helps to give you that sort of extra kind of, uh, uh, it's a demonstration of your commitment to your work and your passion and stuff. So there we go. Doesn't take more than a couple of seconds. It's difficult to know very much about this bag um, based purely on the grave find and unfortunately we really don't have any more context than that. Very few bags have actually survived from the medieval period itself. I don't know about you guys but I spend probably most of my time trying to figure out where I left the tool I had in my hands about, I don't know, 10 seconds ago. Kind of funny sometimes. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is um, put a, use a stitch groover and this just gives you a, a nice, even, consistent edge from the, um, from the side of your project. 
so that all your holes are all nice and evenly spaced. Also means that your holes are slightly below the line of the leather. Now we're going to go through and hole punch. Now this itself isn't historically accurate, but um, based on other finds such as the Hebity Quiver, I think the so-called Vikings or the Scandinavians were able to produce very consistently well-worked uh, pieces of leather and this is really I think one of the ways that I can kind of come close to that. So the next thing we're going to do uh, is cut out the main body. So I've marked up this as best I can based on the grey find and now it's really just a matter of um, cutting through and bringing out the detail. So always so important to use a nice clean sharp edge. These will take a fair bit of time to work through. It's not crazy time but um, there's a lot of hole punching to do. Now I'm using a lighter leather for this one. This is two and a half millimeter so approximately uh, six ounce I think for my uh, American and Canadian viewers. So because this is going to be the external surface we'll just go through and very quickly bevel the edges. So with these, especially the, the detail on the, a piece like this, you just need to take a bit of time and just not rush anything because otherwise you'll um, make a bit of a mess unfortunately. Really warm spring day here in Brisbane, Australia. So I'm already sweating quite badly. Now, so we got one done, now we've got to do the other one. All right, so as before, a nice sharp knife will give you nice clean lines. There's a lot of detail in this project. You can only kind of surmise, well I guess we'll never know, but the people who owned this stuff when they were alive must have been people of significant power and status and wealth. I think they would be very interesting people to know. Alrighty, now I'm just going to edge barrel the perimeter of the pouch. Alrighty, now we're just going to go through and punch some holes for the stitching. You guys might find it easy to, um, to use a bit of beeswax on the end of your leather stamps and punches and stuff. Um, it just helps too. When they're actually penetrating the leather, I guess. Alrighty, all done with the punching. And just like that, here's another one. <laughs> all right, dad joke, I know. What do you? Now we're going to dye the two kind of top pieces, I guess. So I'm using a dark brown for this one. Obviously just make sure you get all the edges in. Because this is a bag, I'm going to do both sides of the leather. An easier way to do this would have been to um, put this into a bath of dye, but I don't actually have that much of this dye left. 
I'm not doing any tooling on this um, because there's no evidence of tooling on the original. Vikings did tooling on their leather work. Uh, I say Vikings, I mean Scandinavians during the early medieval period did do tooling on their leather work, but um, there's no evidence for it on this particular item. So reasons for that, we don't know. Now, for those of you who are interested, I use a leather dye by a company called um, Maclace Leather. I think they're really good. They're great people to work with. They really know their stuff. Okay, so a little bit of a shout out to them. I then put a clear leather sealer. This works a bit like a varnish and it essentially um, will just help protect your leather work from uh, humidity, rain, um, even stuff like UV light and so on. So that's always worth doing too. Now these two pieces I'm going to dye in a light brown colour. So Just always make sure your lids are on properly. Um, so now we're going to use the light brown to dye this one off. You may want to put in multiple coats of dye. Uh, just depends on the effect you're going for. So I wanted a, a colour which was going to contrast the, the wool that I'm using on the inside. That's pretty much the effect that I'm looking for. Now what I'm going to do again is use the leather sealer. Generally speaking, medieval events are held in winter, certainly here in Queensland, Australia. Um, so our winters tend to be very dry, not always, interestingly. Um, so. I'm not as worried about that, but I do travel around quite a bit and attend other events and I get quite involved in the reenactment and community here in Australia. So it's always worth just putting that little bit of extra effort into your work to protect it. All right, let's leave that for a few minutes to dry and then we'll sort out the, um, the lining. All right, when I um, make a knot, at the end of my string I'm going to use waxed linen thread. I just roll it over my finger, roll it down to slightly and voila there's a knot. Okay. Now um, we'll just do the little dots first. Nothing fancy at all going on here. Um, we're just going to do a basic running stitch. I use a blunt needle uh, for this because I don't want to damage the leather. Uh, but when I find when I'm making these that it's, uh, it's useful to do these little dots first because it just helps hold everything in place. Now when I come to the end of that, I'm just going to flip it over and just do a quick little knot underneath just to hold the thread in place. It's, and because this is a waxed linen thread, I can just singe it down. There you go, that'll stay in place now perfectly. Now the fabric that I'm using here is just a, a wool fabric. I've been doing a number of projects for one of my kids, so I just hasn't happened to have a little bit of spare. Actually, this is really a scrap project because it's kind of funny. Um, the leather is, is just out of my scrap pile and the wool is as well. You could use linen as an alternative, um, but that's okay. Right, anyway, now we're just going to do this bit of detailing here. This is a really amazing design. I really like making this product. Um, I, I, I think whoever came up with this design must have been really quite a, you know, because it really demonstrates the colour. The original colour, I'm actually going to take a stab at this and say, could have been red, who knows, um, of the fabric. We don't have any of the surviving fabric, which is a real shame, but um, there's a number of items that have been found in that area which did have 
uh, some red dye or pigment or paint on so um, that makes that a bit interesting and basically you just got to work your way around uh, I guess side to side really just with a continuous running stitch um, this thread really doesn't cost that much money it's like cents every meter or something so um, I don't I'm not concerned anyway about using a bit more um, and and then discarding small lengths of it. Um, this um this bag just comes together really nicely. I like it a lot. Now we're just going to trim off the um, the excess wool. That's done. So now what we're going to do is just flip them together and sew them and then we'll turn it inside out. So you've got to be a bit careful with your stitching and make sure your holes all line up and everything. And away you go. Um, I like to sew the whole length in one direction and then the whole length in the other direction. But to start with, then I would normally just go straight over that just once or twice just to um, make sure I got a nice strong uh, I guess purchase is the right word on the leather um, and that way the, the seam will survive a bit of use I want this to be able to last my kids you know some years really and I, um, I really look forward to them being able to use these bags at at medieval events and stuff like that and so everything's now stitched down now what we're going to do is just turn out the pouch okay pouch is now turned out really 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 looking amazing but now we're just going to stitch the top one and there we go guys all finished all done very 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 happy with this I think my kids are going to be very excited to see it. Alrighty guys, I'm really really happy with this bag. It's come out so well. It's really fantastic. It holds lots of coins, a few other odds and ends that the girls need when they're out reenactment events, that kind of thing. So um, I think it's fantastic. It takes you maybe, you know, an afternoon to build something like this. And that's really from scratch. So it's not something that's too complicated. It's not something that's kind of you know requires a lot of technical skill or anything like that it's actually something you can do with most of the tools that you'll generally have at home uh, or some very inexpensive tools that can be purchased online anyway but the skills to do this bag are, are actually not that great it's a relatively simple construction and for anyone who's into early medieval reenactment this is something that's definitely worth considering Radios, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.